Good morning, astronauts. Welcome to Space Camp. I am here in my space studio where I'll be teaching you your lessons for the next week. Today is Monday, May 18th. And I've crossed off May 18th. Let's count how many school days that we have left. We have after today, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six more days together in our virtual teaching. But how many days left until school is over and you become kindergartners? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's start counting down and blasting off into summer, okay? Well, we're going to talk about some of the planets today. And there's a lot of information. Planets are fascinating. But first, I'm going to start off with the sun. Because all of the planets go around the sun. Okay, all of them in what is called an orbit. All right. And some planets are close to the sun, and some planets are far, far away from the sun. So we'll start in order, and we'll start by talking about Mercury. Here is Mercury. This is planet is closest to the sun. It is the smallest planet. It does not have moon, does not have rings. And it is not the hottest planet, even though it is closest to the sun. It has wrinkles that happen when the iron core of the planet cooled. And that means when you dr drill a hole into a planet, you go through different parts. And the core is right in the middle. And it's made of iron. Two spacecrafts have been to this planet. And I've posted some pictures on our class dojo of what a spacecraft looks like. Those are tools that scientists use to learn about our space and our planets. Next in order is Venus. Venus is very bright. And we can often see it in the sky without a telescope. So I have my telescope here. And I use it to look up at the stars. It is called Earth's sister planet because it, the size is similar. It has the same features as Earth, and it is the closest planet to Earth. It is the hottest planet in our solar system. And it has very thick clouds that make it really hard to study. Okay. This is Earth. Earth is the third planet from the sun, and this is our home. It is the only planet known to support life. That's because it has water, air, good air that we can breathe. It has a very powerful magnetic field, and it has one moon. And much of the Earth is covered by water, and this is our moon. Next in line is Mars, where I have my Martian friend that I discovered named Jibo. Mars is called the Red Planet. Can you guess why? It is home to the tallest mountain in the solar system, and there have been 18 missions to Mars to collect data or information. They have sent remote control rovers to explore Mars, and Mars has a large dust storm. Right here is where their dust storm is. The sun appears to be only half the size compared to what we see. So when people, if there are, is life on Mars, the sun looks really small for them. Pieces of Mars have fallen to Earth as little meteorites. Isn't that cool? And Mars may have some form of liquid. And Mars has two moons. We just have one moon. Next is Jupiter. Jupiter is the one planet we can see. Jupiter has unique clouds, and it has a great red spot that is a huge storm. Jupiter has moons and a thin, thin ring system. The rings are made of dust particles. And eight spacecraft have visited Jupiter. Next we have is Saturn. Saturn is the most distant planet we can see without a telescope. It is the flattest planet. It has layers or bands of clouds. And it has great rings made of ice. You know, wouldn't that be cool to have rings around our planet? It has 150 moons. Four spacecraft have visited the planet. 
Saturn. Next we have is Uranus. Uranus is called a giant ice planet. Can you guess why? Look at it. It's also getting farther and farther away from our sun, so it must be getting colder, right? It has a blue color. That's because it's icy. It is the coldest planet. It has two very important sets of rings. It has moons that are frozen worlds, and only one spacecraft has flown by Uranus because it's so far. It takes a really long time to get there. But the spacecraft did not land on it. It just flew by and took pictures. Last, we have Neptune. Neptune is the most distant planet from the sun. It is the smallest planet. It has six rings, so you can't see them. It's a very, very windy planet. It has 14 moons, and only one spacecraft has flown by this planet. You need a very, very powerful telescope to see it. And I have a picture of a very powerful telescope. So my little telescope, I couldn't see it. So how do we learn about planets, or how do scientists learn about planets? I have a few vocabulary words. Astronomy. Astronomy. That is the study of space. These scientists are called astronomers. And they have an understanding of math. You need to learn a lot of math. Chemistry, and chemistry is what things are made of. For example, if you wanted to know what fireworks are made of, a chemist would be able to tell you because they study chemicals like that. And they study chemicals and how they work together. And they use tools, like I've shown you, to learn about our planets. So they use astronomy and space tech Technolo technology and telescopes, robotic space robots, and special spaceships to gather pictures where they can make guesses or a hypothesis about what they are seeing. And they also gather data. So for example, the, the rover on Mars brought back samples and pieces of Mars so scientists could look and study it. So for today, I have a fun activity for you, actually a couple. You are going to work on numbers 11 through 20, okay? So you have your worksheet. You can cut this, these apart for your cutting skills, put them in order, and color your spaceship picture. And we have our solar system. So you need to Cut them and put them in the right order so you can see where they orbit around the sun. Okay? This is their place in line. All right? I'll be posting some fun things on Class Dojo, so look for that later. And have fun watching your space videos that I sent to you. All right, bye-bye from my space station.